are many ways to explore possibilities of establishing space in an artwork. With the interesting ways of doing so, what for me is so amazing about space is perspective, particularly linear perspective. By applying this to your drawing or painting, it will create an impressive lifelike visualization of things in two-dimensional surface. If an artist cares less about perspective, this might result to objects in his drawings appear floating or flat. So the purpose of using perspectives in our drawing is to actually create an illusion of depth or recession in our artwork. And this comes into two different methods. It could be through aerial perspective or a linear perspective. When we say aerial perspective, this has to do with atmospheric perspective or the color temperature of the objects found in your artwork. But when we talk about linear perspective, this has to do with the point projection of our, our uh, drawing or it could be the objects in our drawing. So it's point projection. Now, in point projection or linear perspective, there are three types. It could be one point perspective, two point perspective, or three point perspective. And this is what we are going to focus today, linear perspective. Okay, so let's uh, focus first on one point perspective. So it has to begin with uh, creating or drawing a, hor a horizontal line that runs across from left to right. So that represents the horizon that divides the sky and the, the earth or it could be the body of water like an open, an open, open sea where we can see a straight line that runs across from left to right. So horizon line is then the eye level or the man's eye view of what we will be seeing in our artwork. So from there, we're going to have points. So these points or dots can be uh, our guide that would bring us to creating lines diagonally running across uh, the spaces lower or higher than the horizon. So if we use those lines that are above the horizon line later on in our object we would see warm's eye view of the object and in contrary to that those that are at the lower portions we will be seeing the bird's eye view of the objects so let's take for example a, a box so let's begin with the the lower portions. So if we're going to draw a box as a main object uh, or subject for this drill is that all of those that are found within the premise of the box uh, are within the projection line. So if we're going to uh, have it this way, if we're going to finalize the the outline of the box it would uh, allow us to see how the box is positioned on a particular space so the box here seemed to be uh, appearing uh, in a particular projection that is a scene on a bird's eye view so as if we are flying like a bird here but in contrary to that uh, if we're going to draw a box that is uh, placed within the the projection line above the the horizon line so it would give us a a view as if we are under the box so it's like a, a warm eye view of the box floating above us so 
If we also differ the position or the placement of these boxes within uh, the space, uh, within the projection line, we would notice that uh, they change on the angle. Or I mean the angle of these boxes change. So because if we will apply linear perspective, uh, we would be learning about how to utilize space in our drawing or painting. That the angle of these objects that we will be using in our in our painting or drawing would differ depending on uh, the position. So here, that is why perspective uh, is very, I mean, the concept of perspective. And we have to learn from, from these theories that this would give us a clear idea about how to utilize space or to utilize perspective in our drawing. Okay, so as you notice, we differ or we change the, the, the position of these boxes and it gives us different angles of the box. So we see bird's eye view and the, the worm's eye view of these objects. So just like the one-point perspective, in two-point perspective, we'll be needing the horizon line. And this time, instead of using one dot or one point, we will be using instead uh, two points. That is why it's called two-point perspective. So these vanishing points will be projected towards the object that we want to draw. So the same manner as in one point perspective, we will be utilizing the box as an example for this. So as if we are seeing through the box uh, in front and in the rear portions. So let's try to emphasize now the contour lines of the box. And let's try to see the difference of how it appears uh, being projected in the vanishing points instead of one point we are using two different perspectives so one at the left and the other one at the right so if we're going to apply value on this uh, illustration it would give us different uh, totally different perspective or angle as we had it in the the one point perspective a while ago so, the same manner as in one point perspective, uh, we could also place projection lines above the horizon line. So, that will also affect the angle on how we see that the object uh, as if uh, we see it floating from above. Uh, so, that would give us the warm, warm eye view of the box so you would notice the difference uh, on how we see uh, this box using uh, different placements of the projection lines either uh, for a bird's eye view or a worm's eye view so the three point perspective just like the one point perspective we still be needing a horizon line that would run across from left to right and two vanishing points but apart from this we'll be needing third point perspective or the third vanishing point so as we project the the projection lines toward the subject which is basically a, a box in this uh, lecture we would still be needing one more projection that is coming from the third vanishing point. So as we create an outline to this box, it would appear to be more dynamic and the angle is quite different compared to that of the first and the second. So 
the three point perspective gives uh, the object more dynamism in terms of uh, angles in in how or in how it looks from our perspective <laughs>
Linear perspective was devised in 1415 by Italian Renaissance architect Filippo Brunelleschi and later documented by architect and writer Leon Battista Alberti in 1435. This paved our perception of space in art making. Please apply the learning you acquired from this video to your artworks. Thank you so much, my dear students. Goodbye for now and see you in the next episode. Thank <laughs> you.